I've Fallen for a Guy and He's a Real Dog by Nadia Ilahi, published July 26, 2023. Yes, you read that title correctly. I've Fallen for a Guy and He's a Real Dog, but more on that later. The tagline of my blog reads, 46 years old plus single plus Pakistani plus American equals we'll see where this goes. The age changes every year since I started this blog in 2017 when I was 40, but in each post that I've created since starting this back then, I have tried to focus on one of these facets or a combo at times. Well, it's been some time since I've devoted a post to the single component of the tagline, so I figured I'd dive into some of that now. My singleness does pop up from time to time, and I have shared much on it in the past, and have also let it be known to my audience how independent I am, as far as the idea of spending time by myself is sometimes more preferable. You know, advocating the whole dating myself mantra. After all, I never let my single status keep me from doing things I want to do. If I want to go to the movies, I go, oftentimes sitting as a party of one in a movie theater filled with parties of two or more. If I want to have a drink at my local bar, I go, enjoying the atmosphere of the pub while sitting alone at the bar, AirPods tucked into my ears usually as I listen to my own mix of tunes. If I want to go to Disneyland, which I do a lot, I certainly go alone and I have come to enjoy these solo adventures more so at times than with a group of friends. Sorry, fellow Disney pals, but this middle child likes to do what she wants to do. But the overall statement that I have devoted sharing in the past is this. I am okay being by myself. In fact, with recent news that Story Mail Entertainment is working to produce my blog into a TV series, I have decided that this news is now my husband and child. In other words, whatever time I would have or thought I would have devoted to a family once upon a time at this point in my life is now going into my career completely despite the Pakistani culture's expectations that I should have been married by now with kids. But when friends today say and encourage me that they know there is someone out there for me, I sometimes don't know if I should be pessimistically critical of their supportive statement or be optimistic about it. Sometimes I think it is very optimistically possible. But most of the time, I think it really is the solo road for me. And please, don't feel bad for me. I'm certainly not looking for anyone to feel sorry for me. That's not what I'm trying to convey here. But the one thing I have always had control over is my career, my professional life. I know how to make my career goals a reality. The love life part, well, not so much. That has always been a bit of a shit show. I mean, at least I know what I'm good at, right? Okay, let's refresh or rewind the past shit shows a bit. It's been some time since I've talked about former Flames, the two most notable ones of the bunch, namely the actor and Howard Hughes. The actor, appropriately nicknamed since he wanted to be an actor, is the dude I moved back out to LA with in 2006. We lived together for three years, and yes, I thought he was the one, the man to give me my babies and be my husband. Though, in hindsight, when we took a trip to wine country back in 2007 together and visited one of the vineyards, my first clue that he wasn't the one to give me my babies and be my husband was when he stole one of the vineyard's wine openers in their souvenir shop. WTF, dude. Not to mention, he was also a heroin addict. He recovered, then broke up with me. Yeah, don't worry, this bell has grown up quite a bit since then. Minus the one night tryst he and I had in 2020. Hey, it was the pandemic and we all thought we were gonna die. Then there was Howard Hughes aptly nicknamed since he emulated the former Titan with his reclusive, odd behavior. I'm also positive my Hughes peed in a jar too. But overall, he's ghosted me. We were friends for several years before the romantic entanglement started. And yes, if you remember, he was former best friend to the actor. Yeah, I had them both. 
it got very 90210 there. But to summarize Howard Hughes, he's a real punishing prick who's probably reading this and getting a big head. Well, fuck that egomaniac, I say. As you can tell, these two boys have made it easy for me to see little hope in future partners, and perhaps I am to be partially blamed for picking the wrong kind of guy. But what can I say? I lead with my heart. But onward. And where is this bell now when it comes to men? Well, there's this neighbor of mine, so we'll call him the neighbor. That was easy. But, uh uh-oh, yep, a neighbor. Don't worry, though. I didn't shit where I eat or live and sleep, but there's been lots of farting. And, well, I'll leave out a lot of the details, but, yes, I had a crush on this guy and thought for a whole year that the feeling was mutual until I was officially friend-zoned by him as he made that clear with his long but lovely list of great attributes about me when letting me down, which included, Nadia, you're very sweet, smart, fun, well-read, hospitable, caring, unselfish. All wonderful traits, by the way, but wouldn't these describe, say, a nun, too? Uh, Nuns can be fun, right? Anyhow, my wise friend Yvonne, who is 76, the same age as my mother, a woman I sometimes refer to as my L.A. mom, but is more a girlfriend and confidant to me, immediately blurted out and questioned when I replayed the whole story to her, What about beautiful? He didn't say you were beautiful? Aww, thank you, Yvonne. But in the neighbor's defense, I told her, he also added, after the nunnery list, and a myriad of other great things. Dude, tell this bell those great things. Did I really imagine this mutual attraction? Regardless, the whole experience, I must admit, has been rather embarrassing for me. I mean, at my age, having a crush... An unrequited crush at that, too? What is this, junior high? Yeah, I felt dumb. I have since separated my feelings for the neighbor, but I have had a hard time, or rather refused to, separate my feelings for his dog. That's right, your Pakistani Southern Belle has fallen in love with a four-legged creature, a real dog, as the title was clear. What did you think I meant? And the feeling is quite requited. Often I've wanted to say or or rather demand to the neighbor, can I just have your dog then? Before throwing my hands up in the air. Don't worry, no dog napping will take place. Okay, so what's the pup's name? Riggs. When the neighbor asked me for some name suggestions shortly after adopting the dog last fall, I offered Mando, you know, after the Star Wars series, The Mandalorian, since we're both fans. But nope. He went with Mel Gibson's crazed character's name from the Lethal Weapon franchise. Yeah, rolling my eyes, too. I think the only thing I appreciated about that name choice was the Gen Xer in him. But seriously, Riggs over Mando? Am I right, folks? But to counter the name decision, I did give Riggs a Baby Yoda Mandalorian-themed collar for Christmas that he still wears today. I first met Mando, I mean Riggs, when the neighbor brought him home at just eight weeks old. When a puppy that age has very little bladder control, as my foot soon learned this when I first met the little guy. It's like he was marking his territory, or he imprinted on me. I was his Bella Swan to my Jacob Black from the Twilight series. Yes, I know, Jacob imprinted on Bella's daughter, but you get what I mean. But aw, it was love at first sight for Riggs and me, despite the neighbor's mortification of the pee on my toes. But thankfully, I was wearing flip-flops, so my shoes and feet were not ruined without a little soap and water. In the following months after Peagate, I grew to love this pup and would often see him and his dad, the neighbor, out in the courtyard of the building we share. The pup always eager to greet me as well. The neighbor, Riggs, and I even enjoyed a dinner out together at a nearby neighborhood dog-friendly restaurant, the kind with an actual dog menu. 
Mind you, I did think it was a date. And sometimes when I'm on my balcony working or entertaining friends and can't come down, or if the neighbor is in a hurry when leaving with Riggs, allowing no time for me to pet the dog, I can hear Riggs whimpering as he wants to come over to me, even yanking himself from his leash to point his dad my way. It melts my heart. I mean, the actor in Howard Hughes never even felt this way about me. When I hosted House of the Dragon viewing parties at my apartment last fall, which the neighbor was invited to and attended some, Riggs, unfortunately, couldn't attend as my place is not puppy-proof, and with all the carpet in my apartment, my allergies could possibly flare up. It's worse and a sure thing with cats, though. But my apartment just isn't pet-friendly. I have way too many Funko Pops and other decor in easy reach for a dog to grab, not to mention the plethora of Disney plush toys that surround my living room, making it way too easy as well for Riggs to want to chew them up. And over last holiday season, I bought a new couch and a new shaggy area rug. Little Riggs is still a puppy, just coming up on being a year old. And as I have nestled into my adult years for quite some time, I'm just not really a pet person. My close friends, who I've known for decades, who are pet people, know this about me. I'm reminded of my dear friends, Melissa and Claudia. I met both these wonderful ladies when I worked at Universal, and these gals are mommies to adorable fur babies, and though I respect this about them, they too respect my interest in having no fur baby of my own. In fact, for years, I've said the only creature I'd ever want to take care of is the kind that came out of my belly, if that were to happen. But I wasn't always not a pet person. And as I have nestled into my adult years for quite some time, I'm just not really a pet person. My close friends, who I've known for decades, who are pet people, know this about me. I'm reminded of my dear friends, Melissa and Claudia. I met both these wonderful ladies when I worked at Universal, and these gals are mommies to adorable fur babies. And though I respect this about them, they too respect my interest in having no fur baby of my own. In fact, for years, I've said the only creature I'd ever want to take care of is the kind that came out of my belly, if that were to happen. But I wasn't always not a pet person. Growing up in Monroe, Louisiana, we had family dogs, but they always stayed in our spacious backyard. The first one was Susie, a poodle my dad brought home shortly after I was born without asking my mom's opinion if getting a dog was a wise choice to make with a toddler and a newborn in the house. Susie passed away when I was about eight years old, I think, and it was the first time I experienced what death meant. I was very sad, to say the least. But like most families, we moved on to other family dogs, and the one that touched my heart the most was Lucy. She was a mixed Labrador retriever, and I gave her the name Lucy after my admiration for Lucille Ball at the time, and since our Lucy had strawberry blonde or reddish hair as a puppy, much like the famed star, it just seemed the perfect name to me. And I truly loved our Lucy. But after losing Lucy years later when I was in college, I was very heartbroken, and since then, I haven't allowed myself to have much affection for any little creature until now with Riggs. Just look at these photos of him. He's so adorable. This one where he's sitting still waiting for his treat and this one where he's taking a nap. I have come to gain quite the love for this little guy, even finding myself trying to purposely run into him when doing laundry or to see him when out on my balcony. And for months, after meeting Riggs, and as he was getting a bit bigger, whenever Riggs would see me, he'd run over to me and jump on me, practically maul my face with his version of a kiss. It was so sweet, actually. Don't worry, he never accidentally bit me or scratched my skin. And though the neighbor tried to enforce the no jumping and mauling rule, I really didn't mind, which could come as a shock to some of you who've known me a long time as I've never been a fan of dogs pawing at me. By the way, the numerous dog Instagram videos I have viewed has quadrupled from zero views before since meeting Riggs. Most of the videos I watch on Instagram are videos of dogs who resemble Riggs. He does favor my Lucy somewhat too, and I think that has a lot to do with my affection for him. 
Riggs truly is a sweet pup, very sensitive and astute. He's gotten better with the jumping on me when he sees me as he's a bit more trained. In fact, when he sees me on the balcony, he immediately gets in his sit pose, ready for me to come pet him and shake his paw, his body language crying out to me, Look! Look, Nadia! I'm sitting! I'm behaving! Come pet me! <laughs> I can't really explain my affection for this puppy, but Melissa thinks my love for Riggs means I'm ready to adopt a fur baby of my own. And though I have found myself paying more attention to the neighborhood dogs when I'm out, I honestly only love Riggs. I'm just a one-dog kind of gal. What can I say? Recently, three friends of mine lost their dogs earlier this year. And though I empathize with them as they went through the grief and heartbreak of losing their puppies, it forced me to imagine. What if Riggs got sick and died? Morbid thinking, I know, but their losses got me pondering on how I would react if something terrible happened to Riggs. And Riggs isn't even my dog. But as I thought this, I started to cry. Actual tears. Okay, yes, it's probably my hormones and the whole nurturing mom inside of me kicking in full swing to make up for not being an actual mother to a kid at this point in my life, perhaps. But my feelings are real nonetheless. So where does this leave me? Will Riggs and I have more than our chance encounters in the courtyard of our apartment complex? Sadly, I predict we probably will not. The frequency of running into Riggs has lessened a bit as of late, partly due to the neighbor's, well, let's just say lifestyle, and mostly due to boundaries I've had to create to protect my heart. Not seeing the dog makes me sad. I miss Riggs especially as I've had to see him strut off with other lady friends of the neighbors, leaving me behind. Yes, I'm jealous of their time with my pup. It appears wanting to keep a friendship with me might have been more about the neighbor wanting to be polite and hospitable to let me down gently than anything else. After all, when Harry Met Sally is one of my favorite movies because of its debatable dramatization that men and women can't be friends. The neighbor and I are just that. Neighbors. More than acquaintances, but less than friends. We used to hang out and were perhaps on the brink of something, but we don't hang out anymore. Just the occasional hi or wave from afar, and maybe short convos here and there out in the courtyard, special moments where I can see and pet rigs. But in usual Pakistani Southern Belle fashion, I will move forward from this. And perhaps, maybe one day, I will have my own four-legged baby to take care of. So, like I said, I've fallen for a guy, and he's a real dog, too. Note, this is the last blog post for the summer as the Pakistani Southern Belle will be on hiatus for the month of August as I plan to enjoy some downtime with a trip to Atlanta. And most importantly, August is my birthday month. I will also use this time to record more audio of former posts, so be on the lookout. I will return with new content in September. Have a great rest of your summer and stay cool out there.